Welcome back, my people. Thank you so much for spending a couple minutes with me. I'm really, I'm really humbled to actually be invited into your, into your device just for a couple minutes. So thank you. Thank you. So listen to me. Today we're going to talk about Tempo Guitars, which was a Merson company, Bernie Mersky. We've already talked about Univox. You know, Univox was something that the Merson sort of, you know what I mean, birthed. You know what I'm saying? We got, you know, we've got a lot of stories under our belt already. You know, and I don't want to clog up the information artery too much. Real quick, in the late 40s, Bernie Mersky started distributing instruments, imported instruments usually. And, uh, you know what I mean? The rest is history. Um, Tempo was one of his first brands. This is an old Tempo nylon string guitar. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. It's a couple of bits. It's very, very good condition, man. Excellent condition. And I'm going to take this guitar, which is an old Tempo. And this is exactly like my mom's first guitar ever was a tempo guitar. That's why I'm sentimental about it. In 1967, I think, 68, when my mom started college, I believe my grandfather, who passed away before I was born, he bought her a guitar and guitar cases at the your Berlin auction, I believe, at Howard and Nan's Music. I believe, I believe this is the correct information. I don't want to give you the false information. Anyway, I fucked that guitar when I was a kid. I recently restored it, I don't know, about three, four years ago for her. I'm gonna go over her house. I'm gonna show you this guitar next to that one. This is a rare tempo, like a sunburst model. Love the exact same guitar that she has. I'm gonna kind of fix it up a little bit, restore it. You know what I mean? Do a couple of tricks to it. I have a couple of tempos like this one here. I'm gonna show you. You know, I made a little lamp over there. I want to show you too. So a couple of things about tempo. You know, we'll talk about tempo along the way. We'll be peaceful. You know, we'll enjoy the you know minutes that we have together. You know what I mean? And then we'll part as friends. You know what I mean? So let me let me bring you over to my mom's house. I want to show you these two tempos side by side. So I'll flip you around and bring you there, man. Bring you there like that. Bring you there like that. Any guitars. So this <laughs> this is a picture here from about 30 years ago. Yeah. On this very living room couch. This is my whole collection. And at the end there you see it's my mom's guitar. Right around the time the bridge is lost. This is about 1999. <laughs> around about. Oh you see it's off to the side. And here we have, this is my mom's guitar in a case. Now I fixed it a couple of years ago. And this is the case, the one I just got. Cases are very, very similar. You can tell they're made by the same person. Probably, probably different order. You know what I mean? This one's probably a little older or whatever. It's definitely messed up. So let's take these cases off, man. Let's take a look at these guitars. Uncased. Now I said I fixed up my mom's guitar. My mom's thankfully here to tell a little bit of tales. Do you remember when you got this guitar, Mom? I got it for Christmas sometime in the late um, 60s, probably like 69 or maybe even 70. Right around it's 70. my first and only guitar. Yeah. My parents got it for me at a place called the Berlin Auction. Berlin Flea Market, right? Yeah. 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 Berlin Flea Market and Auction. Now... These are the original tuners that I took off of it because they're all messed up. And I, I replaced it. <laughs> I never played the guitar well. So no, nah, I remember this came with a little record, remember? Like, E. Yes. Yeah. I'd well, like to dig that out someday. And who knows what happened to that. But anyway, I always went looking for these tuning keys. That, these are the originals. And you see that I actually kept. This is a, a set from this guitar that I had replaced. You see, I got like generic replacements because of the spacing. Right. A little bit different, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does it have a thing inside that tells you when it was made? Uh, uh, these guitars these? probably made around 19, like 68, 69. You know what I'm saying? They're still made in Japan. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably yeah. around about that area. These made by Tempo. You know what I mean? Which a company called uh, Bernie Mersky owned it. That's the name of the guy, anyway. Now, is this its original bridge on this one? Yeah, that's what the original one looked like. You know what I mean? And I've replaced this one because, right. you know what I mean? I lost this one. You can see in those pictures from like 30 years ago, it was already lost. And I was using like a pencil, I believe. Like a big square pencil. So, I'm going to try to fix this one up. You know what I mean? It's missing a couple It's missing a couple of screws out of here. And luckily, the original tuning keys that I have here, I have originally actually two screws left. <laughs> so, anyway. So, now I'm going to talk about... Is okay. the back the same? Like, is the same hook up here as what's over there? Yep, look at that. Even that part's yeah, identical. I actually... Yeah, I was just going to talk about this. The You see the uh, strap button here. 
Uh, this one I put on. I was trying to figure out what kind of strap bones on here. Yeah. Huh. See that? Exactly the same. Here we go, folks. So let's get this guy back in commission. This is like a tempo. It's like more of a. As you can see, it's more of like a. It doesn't have the same kind of shine this one does. But you can tell it's definitely made. You know what I mean? But I think you cleaned this one up when you. Oh yeah, definitely. It, so that's it probably why. It looks that, like a little bit sheeny or shiny. Yeah, right. I'm gonna try to duplicate that sticker, basically. You know what I mean? Just give it a little polish. I'm not really that good. I'm a hack. You know what I'm saying? Do <laughs> you remember about 20 years ago? I was talking myself in the mirror before right. work. Right. I don't know. I want to tell you something. Ma. That was only really two weeks ago. I time traveled to space and time. I stepped in a quantum leap accelerator like Dr. Samuel Beckett, and I quantum leaped back into my own body 20 years ago. Luckily, you know what I mean? I leapt out right before I woke up, and I got to play my guitar. My room was all gray. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful spiritual experience, and it's all captured right on my channel, an episode of my programs. You can check it out and tell your friends about it. Hit subscribe if you like it. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I'm feeling fine. What was wrong? Did you get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? No, I'm just, I, I'm okay, man. I'm okay. Okay. So here we are, back at the lab. With a case unknown to us. What are you doing here, kid? kid? Well, I told you this episode was going to be about tempo itself, man. I showed you a little guitar in the beginning. That was, you know what I mean? A, a specialty class style guitar. And this is the original case, man. This is like... You know what I mean? Really, that guitar. You know what I mean? Done up as a classical guitar. You know what I'm saying? Possibly a little bit later, because it's got, as you see, you know what I mean? Phillips head screws. It is Japanese. It's got those, you know what I mean? Same exact buttons, so we know it's the same factory. Same people doing the same game, man. The same old tricks and off their trade, man. So I just wanted to talk about this guitar, you know, very quickly. It seems to be very good condition. It seems to be possibly even the original strings. I don't know, man. But um, it doesn't have very much wear on it at all. It's in very, 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 very good condition. And I see it's uh, these two look to be, you know what I mean, early seventies, late sixties screws in there but they seem to be you know what I mean like solid screws you know what I mean they look to be factory screws who would do that <laughs> you know, honest, who would do that you know, there doesn't seem to be any problem with this bridge at all there doesn't seem to be any I mean if Bobby G had fixed it you know what I mean you wouldn't see any, anything either you know what I mean this would look just like Bobby G was done you know what I'm saying if you remember last week's episode but let's think about last week's episode you know what I mean? What happened, man? Somebody put a whole bunch of, you know, steel strings on a guitar like this and it pulled the thing right off. You know what I mean? Now, traditionally, there are no screws in, the, in you know what I mean, a classical, you know what I mean, guitar. And if you have strings like this, you don't really even need it. You know what I mean? It should be good. As soon as somebody puts, you know what I mean, Steel strings on his bad boy. Whoosh. Back in the 60s, nylon string classical guitars weren't, you know what I mean, as prevalent and popular as they are today. You know what I'm saying? Really, you know what I'm saying? People didn't really know. That's why so many of these guitars got destroyed. So I'm thinking, you know what I mean, that this might be done by the actual distributor. And the reason I'm thinking that is I actually saw on the internet three other examples of this exact guitar in this exact case that have these exact kind of screws put right here you know what i'm saying i think the distributor is like you know what i mean these kids are pulling these strings okay we have taken all these returns you know what i mean these stupid steel strings you know so they're putting these on there just to try to keep the bridges on there hey man that's my you know what i mean theory i mean i've seen about like you know what i mean including this example about four of them you know what i mean any hoot, man. The reason that we really dug this old beautiful gal up in her chipboard case is for her beautiful, beautiful sticker. Look at that. So we're gonna like bring this over to the, the scanner. 
that we got over there in the workshop, man. Hook up our little trusty laptop. Laptop, try to scan it up. Bring it in to Photoshop. Try to make this sticker, man. That's what we're here to do. Try to fake the bait, man. I'll see you in the workshop, man. And then we can say, peace be with you. <laughs> Please, peace be with you. <laughs> Please. So, yeah, we got the guitar being scanned directly into the computer. You know what I mean? You can do it with a photograph. But you know what I'm saying, man? The guitar, you don't have to mess around with. Take a photograph, man. It'll be the exact correct proportions. You know what I'm saying, people? The exact correct proportions, man. So let's get that into Photoshop and turn it into black and white line art, man. You know what I'm saying? I know a little bit about computers. Look at that. Look at that line art, man. Great, man. Now, as you saw in that Telstar, you know, Kawaii video where I did the Made in Japan sticker, you know, I mean, I'm a collector and I like to be serious about, you know, reproducing these kind of metallic stickers. They've been around a long time, folks. And here's a, a bottle from 100 years ago, Philadelphia. See that? It's got the same kind of deal on it, man. So, that being said, man, you know what I mean? I like to be prepared. I got all kinds of different metallic, you know what I mean, gold papers and things. And I always put them aside. I mean, here's an old box that, you know what I mean? I, I've been peeling this off the, on the other side of it. You know what I mean? Using in these old stickers and stuff. And this is actually foil transfer. It's just basically gold foil. Very, very thin gold foil. And what you do is you, you would print this out in negative. You know what I mean? And on a black surface. And then you would iron one of these on silver side down. You know what I'm saying? And then you would peel it away. You know, you take a piece of masking tape and you can pull it off too very carefully you know what I mean and it would leave like gold you know what I mean where the the toner is it would stick to the toner you know what I mean and the black surface underneath that would actually look really good but that's a real pain in the ass to be honest with you it's a long process man so I got all other kinds of metallic papers man as my mom gave me this this is gold um, it's contact paper and this is some old sheets this is probably from like the 60s you know what I mean of gold foil paper you know what I mean Sometimes you can get, you know what I mean, the, the toner of the uh, laser jet printer stick on this kind of stuff. Sometimes it doesn't stick on it. You know, so I went to Michael's, you know what I mean, to find what else they had, you know what I mean. I picked up a couple of things. Here's a metallic piece of, like, just paper. You know what I'm saying? It's probably will, will hold toner the best. And these are two different types of uh, gold metallic, like, wallpaper. This is like a, a shiny one. This is more of a matte one. And I've compared them all with the, the Tempo, you know what I mean, sticker here. And I think that the matte wallpaper actually looks the best. I mean, it's, it's, it looks like it'll print out the best. And I think it'll be the finest. I mean, this might be good too. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be a pain in the ass to sort of print out on that. So we're going to, you know what I mean, print out a couple of these on the laser jet. You know what I mean? Uh, first, we'll we'll do it on this. Of course, we'll do test ones and size it up, make sure it's the correct size. For now, a couple, we'll see how they come out. You know what I'm saying? And if if they're unsatisfactory, then we'll you know try on this. And then we'll try on this. You know, we'll try on them all. You know what I'm saying? We can always put a clear coat over it. You know what I mean? If it looks like it's gonna come off, we got all kinds of options. But let's start with this one first. Just eyeballing it and comparing it. You know what I mean? Side by side with the sticker. It looks like it'll probably give us the best one. All right, folks. So, you know what I mean? That's a peaceful way. I'll see you after we printed it out. Remember, always, you know what I mean, test it on like a piece of white paper first. You don't just put the sheet in here. Especially if you only have a little tiny piece of the, of the, of the you know what I mean, of the paper you're going to use, man. Be careful, man. I'll see you when we're done, man. Wish me luck. Yes, folks. There it is. Always print extras. You know what I mean? This doesn't even need a clear coat over it. It looks like it's going to be fine, man. We've got extras in case we cut it out and it looks like shit. You know what I mean? Looks great, though, man. It's absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect, man. You know what I'm saying? No paper wasted. we got a whole bunch of extras. So, Tempo, man. Let's talk about Tempo, man. i got this cool little amp I want to show you, man. i got this cool little amp I want to show you. Let's take a little detour for a minute, man. 
Let's take a detour for a minute and just take some peace be with us. Peace be with us. Look after ourselves. No, I'm sitting here trying to set up the shot for this amp. Any way I try to film it, man, it comes out looking otherworldly. Flash, no flash, this, that, the other thing, man. It's like an otherworldly looking piece of equipment, man. From the late 60s with three inputs on an 8-watt amp. Hmm. With a volume knob and a tone knob, powering up off the tone knob. That's about it, man. But it's in great, great condition. Never even tried it. Not grounded. Got the original two-prong plug. Everything is like it was bought today, man. Like it was bought yesterday. Japanese made. Don't know exactly what's going on inside it. Have not unscrewed it. Everything is where it should be. Could use a little cleaning. Other than that, man. This guy is in great, great shape. And I got a special treat for you people. A special, special treat, man. Our dear friend, Ricky D. The great Rick DeRouge in the other room. And he's tuning up the great Bertha, man. You're in for a special treat. So we'll see if it works the right way. By getting an expert's opinion, man. Let's take a look, man. Let's take our time. There it is, man. The Temple Practice Amp. My brother Ricky D, man. Sorry about the hiss. That's more or less from the, the lights up, up above, man. Fluorescent lights on the same circuit. Not grounding. The Temple Practice Amp. Gem mint condition, man. Hope you liked it. This is my brother Ricky D, man. God bless you. Peace be with you. Let's give you a little bit more history about Temple, man. Keep ourselves in shape. Hi folks, so now that we know a little bit more about Tempo's activities in the mid-60s, a couple of other cool products, contemporary with this particular instrument that we're working on, you know what I mean? I'm going to call this the missing link instrument that we're working on, because this right here, this is the first example I can find online of this particular instrument as marketed by Mirsky as a Tempo. You know what I mean? It's pretty much the same as ours, you know what I mean? with a little bit you know what i mean of a lighter sunburst and it doesn't have that sticker it still has this is actually this example here let's see here if i can zoom in folks can i find the room there we go just this example here actually has tempo printed on the headstock man isn't that a trip man isn't that crazy isn't that a crazy thing to know everything else is the same as our guitar though you know what i mean one thing i want to point out though is this bridge man see that bridge you know what I mean? That's one of those ones that looks like a bridge that's got like a lollipop stick on it, man. When I redid my mom's, I just used one of these old stock guys like this, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know what I mean? It does a trick. It's nice. It's adjustable. But what we got is like a cigar box on there. I don't know if it's original, but yeah, they might have used it for a couple years. You never know, man. You never know. So ours, I think, is a missing link. You know, the journey between this particular instrument, the first one of this variety, marketed as a tempo and the last one with my mom's was an example of and this is an example it took me a long time you know what i mean to actually find a photograph of this particular instrument that showed the strap button see it's got that you know what i mean that bridge but look it's got the strap button on this picture man i guess these must have fallen out of most of these guitars you see that it's a regular old white plastic strap button and luckily, I have a whole bunch of these in the parts drawer, man. All these old style strap buttons, man. We'll just get a, you know, screw and screw that right in there. So we got a couple little things to work on, people. You know what I mean? Don't count us out yet, man. We're still all tempoed up, man. I'll see you back in the lab with our missing link. Please be with you. Our friend, the missing link. The missing link. The beautiful missing link, man. The second generation man here's the first generation second generation my mom's is of course the third generation now let's talk a little bit more about this particular instrument now whoever made it it was not made directly by Gwai Tone or Kawhi or Tiesco 
there were some other couple like four or five factories you know what i mean in, in uh japan that specialized specifically in acoustic instruments you know what i mean this is you know what i mean not built by you know what i mean those guys but they made a bunch of guitars you know and you remember this kent you know what we talked about earlier their hallmark really is you know what i mean this little screen printed steel reinforced neck thing and on the back of the headstock they have you know what i mean this japan stamp I and mean, that's what you know they all have you know what i mean you see this one you know what i'm saying in the back of the headstock the japan stamp you know what i mean this has got the clearest japan stamp of any of them man it's gorgeous man but you know what i mean i saw a winston one that had almost every single one of these same hallmarks you know what i mean as this tempo one does you know what i mean but it had like a yellow you know what i mean so, sort of you know gibson sort of sunburst going on there you know what i'm saying now the manufacturer there are three different types of tuning you know what i mean pegs that came on this one this one is the of course the second generation tuning pegs you know what I mean? That came on it. The first generation that was on this old girl here. Actually, it looked like this. They were very unique, this company. You know what I mean? They had, like, unique-looking tuning pegs. This is generation one. And this is generation... This is the one with all my mom's. You know what I'm saying? And there's different, like, post-spacing. Slightly different post-spacing for each generation, man. It's kind of a, a frustrating thing, you know what I mean? Because the standard ones don't fit on there. You know what I mean? If if you have a broken post, this is the same. Because this is, a, you know what I mean? The early post spacing generation, man. So, anyhow, how do we know that this is actually a tempo, man? You know, what if it's a Winston? Or what if it's a Kent? What if it's something else? Only the tempos have this weird piece that my mom was pointing out. With the little rivets in it. You know what I mean? And I was checking that, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, hey. And I researched it like for four hours, just looking at different pictures I had stored and on the internet. It's a different kind of metal, man. You know what I mean? On my mom's and on this one. I've noticed that. So I think, and it's not, this is screwed on. You know what I mean? And this is just riveted on. So I think this, this is Merson put this on. You know what I mean? I think the backs were popping off. This guitar, when I got it, you know what I mean? Which is not a Kent and does not have that. The back was off of it when I got it. You know what I'm saying? It was just completely detached. So I think, you know, the same thing with those screws, man. You know, Bernie Mersky was like, you know, hey, these fucking guys are using diseased animals for the glue over there. Put some rivets in these fuckers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he said that, man. I don't know if he really talked like fucking Joe Pesci, bro. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to liven it up. You know, he might have talked like this. Perhaps the animals that they're using for their glue compound are of a diseased nature. You know, maybe he talked like that, man. I don't fucking know. You know, I mean, neither do you, so let's not judge, man. You know what I mean? I'm a voices guy. These strings look to be original. You know what I mean? I can see this little blue felt. You know what I mean? Right around the, the bottom. I remember my mom's had that. You know what I mean? That was very, you know what I mean? Very distinct memory from my early childhood in the 70s, man. And this looks like they're, these are the original wraps, too, it looks to be, man. See that? Original wraps, man, by the original wrapper, man. So we're just going to loosen these strings a little bit and clean this fucking thing off, man. Get it clean and tidy, man, you know what I mean? These, you know what I mean, scratches, nothing we can do about it, you know what I'm saying? Cry me river. This is probably stored behind a couch, back of a closet, you know what I mean, up in the attic. Somewhere, you know, you know what I mean? where it was in contact with other fucking things that got scratched, man. Cause there's no play wear on it. We're not going to have to do any fret job. We're just going to clean it off. Like my mom, you know what I mean? Somebody got a guitar. You know what I mean? In, in the later mid-60s. About 66, 67, I'm going to say. You know what I mean? Didn't play it. Put it away in the closet. You know what I'm saying? Forgot about it. And here it is, man. Let's get it back into action, man. Let's get these strings slackened. And let's do our fucking... Our best pledge to clean it off, man. I'll see you when we're done with that. And then we can say, peace be with you. Look after yourself. Peace be with you. All right. All cleaned up, man. All clean and cleanly. We just loosen the strings a little jiff.
You know what I'm saying? Nut popped off now. Diseased animal glue. Not very good, man. It's okay. It was a clean pop. No harm, no foul, man. We got the phony lemon pledge working overtime in this bad girl. You know what I mean? Took a little steel wool of this. Looking good, sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? Nothing we can do about these. Just gotta live with them. Just got this lovely mat. This is actually like a mat sort of thing going on here. You know what I'm saying? It's not just wear and tear. Definitely uh, like a mat thing happening. Anyhow, we'll just leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? So I got this sticker out. I wasn't going to put a clear coat on it, but I took this matte acrylic uh, sealer. Looks fucking dynamite now. Let's cut it out carefully and affix it to this. You know what I'm saying? We'll fix it. Asphyxiated. I'll see you when we're all stuck up, man. Peace be with you, man. That's nice. Gorgeous. Bernie Mursky himself would be fucking shocked, man. Shocked and fooled, man. Looks great. Once you get it perfect the way you want it, you know what I'm saying? The back peels right off, man. It's a sticker. It's a real thin sticker, too. It's a real sticky sticker, so where you put it down at the beginning is where it's going to stay. So be careful. That's why you got to make extras, people. Clamp that nut down. You know what I'm saying? Looking good, people. Looking nice, man. So we're going to let that set. Let that set, man. Very, very pleased. So let's look at the business end down here, man. We're still missing this, man. Our hole's still un unfilled, man. Got one of these old gals, man. Old stock. It's probably from the 80s. Mm, a little bag of them, man. Put it in there, man. Get it in. Let's screw it in, people. And, you know, we're we'll unclamped. We'll come back for more, man. For more, man. In the meantime, think about some things that are peaceful, man. You know what I'm saying? Think about tempo. Fast or slow. Hey that mommy, I can take off my shoes and I can take my socks off. You're 36, you should have been able to do that a long time ago, Charlie. It's time to get a job. Here's your farina. Look at that, man. Perfectly done. Oh, we're so close to being done, people. Our redemption is very close, man. Oh. Feel some tempo jamming soon. Look at this. Still missing missing some screws, man. They're my mom's tuners. Like I said in the beginning, man, we still have two lucky screws left, man. You got some playing time left, buddy. Let's put them in there. There they are, man. New life for the screws for my mother's guitar, man. The original tuner screws, man. Live on to a Pass their screw ability that to another generation of tempo, man. Peace be with you, screws. So, we're almost there. Only one final detail, one final sentimental story that's tied into this nonsense. See how these strings kind of look like they're nickel plated? That's because they are, kind of. Now, my mom's actual tempo that she got from her parents Christmas in 1969 had a case you know what I mean the little gig bag right a couple picks had a record at a chord chart you know what I'm saying and the record went along with like the chord chart pretty much you know what I mean all the basic chords you know what I'm saying and it came with an extra set of strings you know how I know that about the extra set of strings because Bobby G right he got a max tone acoustic guitar 1989 and by 1990 you know and a couple of strings are broke you know he wasn't really sure how to you know replace them or whatever and then he found it in the drawer in the cupboard out in the kitchen a set of strings extra strings and he identified them immediately as the extra set from his mother's because they all had this little blue you know what I mean but they were brand new that's cool so Bobby G used them up, and then eventually, like late 1990, man, he had to go get like a 
first pack of strings. See who's wear them all. Farrington Music, man. Who oh, got his first guitar, man? I've actually looked on the internet. Farrington Music. You know what I mean? Still exists. They've closed all their brick and mortar stores. These be like three or four, or maybe five or six in the state, man. Farrington Empire. It's down to selling the shit out of like his like you know what I mean garage. Like a reverb shop, man. See, seven ninety five, and this is like nineteen ninety, man. For a set of three dollar mark strings, man. What a rip off. I was making five dollars an hour at a hotel in Belmont. I was doing well for a young boy, but I mean, you know what I'm saying, man. Rip off, man. Rip off, man. Anyway, man. So these are like the first bunch of strings that were I took off the max tone, man. You know when I got my new string, I saved them all, man. The envelope, come on, save them, guy. Let me see here, man. See that? That's what we want to see, man. Look at the E string, though, man. Look at this big fat E, man. Look at that. It's got some luxurious, luxurious blue felt on there. Brand new, man. Brand new, man. So here it is, people. Oh, our mission is completed, man. Completed. Completed, man. Completed. Completed, man. Completed. Put that string on. I see in the old glamour shots our sentimental story, man. You know what I mean? The tempo string lives another day. To everything turn, turn, turn. There it is, people. You know what I'm saying? A gorgeous instrument. Not on the outside, but on the inside. I've been playing it for a couple of days, man. I realized that it's actually been well played. Now, I, I examined the strings carefully in the frets. Looks like somebody did a fret job a long time ago. Looks like it has been played. One thing I noticed is that you see up here, all the strings are all nickel plated still, you know what I'm saying? And you get down here on the strings that I didn't replace, you know what I'm saying? And all the nickel plating is worn down. You know what I'm saying? Right to that copper. Right to that cheap copper. And you can see how like some of the strings is all like, worn through. You know what I'm saying? Some of the strings has worn through. Totally the better string, you know what I'm saying? That's the sign of like a Siri guitar. And I'm very, very lucky, you know what I mean, to be able to replace the original string, you know what I'm saying, with another one of them blue tips, man. How lucky is that, people? You know what I'm saying? What a special thing, man. So, any hoot, here's the guitar, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what else you people want. You know, I had a multi-platinum artist come in here, demonstrate the practice amp, you know what I'm saying? I showed you my little student classical guitar, you know what I'm saying? What a fine collection of student grade instruments. You know what I'm saying? Looks great. Been damaged, been used, been played. See this bridge here? Actually, that's the way it intonates, man. A perfect intonation too. Hear that? Perfect intonation, man. That's the way it is, man. So I gotta correct myself, man, on an error. You know, I was down at the swap meet one morning, and one of my friends down here who actually watches my show, one of my six subscribers. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, I watched your show the other day, man. I liked it, man. I'm a big Jim Croce fan. I was like, yeah, it's good, man. I like Jim Croce, man. Right on, bro. He said, like, well, you're making shit up. You know what I mean? You just make up all kinds of facts and shit. I was like, what? You probably you don't make no shit up, man. I'm fucking just believing in the truth, man. I ain't no fake news, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you saying that? He went to Glassboro. What the fuck are you talking about, man? He went to Villanova. Jim Croce went to Villanova. I was like, ooh. Jim Croce is a smart man. What are you trying to fucking say, man? People from Glassboro, straight teachers, college, aren't fucking that smart, man? Fuck yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I lose. I'm down to fucking seven subscribers now, man. You know what I'm saying? Fuck this guy, man. Then I went home and I read. And he's like, oh, he's right, man. Jim Croce did go to Villanova. What the fuck am I thinking about, man? 
And then I looked up Maury Muleheiser, and man, he went to Glassboro. I was like, oh. Well, right, man. My whole story was about how Jim Croce was like nothing without Maury Muleheiser. And so it was Maury who went to Glassboro State College. And I looked at, further looked up that he was, you know what I mean, born just a couple months away from my mother in 1949. They are in the same class, same grade and everything. My mother at the time was dating a drummer, one of the popular bands down there on campus. You know what I'm saying? So she's probably down the quad with her little tempo, and I bet you Maury Muleheiser and stopped around a circle, man. You know what I'm saying? Jammed out a little bit. Maybe even played my mom's tempo for a second. Hey, man. Passed me a little cheek guitar, and he would have been able to riff out on it, man. You know what I'm saying? And luckily, my mom's boyfriend at the time got shipped out to Vietnam, and a couple months later, my father came back from Vietnam. Met my mother. You know what I'm saying? Peace be with us all, man. You know what I'm saying? Fate don't change nobody. So here we go. Let's listen to this fucking thing, man. Enough tell, talking all these personal tales right now, man. Say this, people, the tempo, the student model. Well, fuck that, man. I will get personal. I've been talking all about my mom on this series, harassing her, time traveling, doing all kinds of weird stuff, man. And I was just mentioned that my dad was in Vietnam. You know what I mean? I'm talking about my mom hanging out with more Mulheisen or whatever. And my mom, my dad was acting in Vietnam. You know? Just talking a little bit about that, man. I remember. 2003, I was recording a song with my man Theory on the Derelict's com uh, commercial sound. It was called Dawn. And we put all kinds of like crazy wars. That was about Ward's song, really. You know, and a girl he liked. Anyway. So I found a tape that my father made see, 50 years ago, right around now, right when he came home to Vietnam in 1971. He was singing all kinds of songs he had written and a story he, he wrote. Swagged out crazy stuff, and the songs happened to be in the same exact key. The song Dawn was in like a droning key, man. It was great. I put it all together, and I played it for my pop, and he was like, Oh, that's fantastic! That song sounds just like Vietnam, insane. Yes. <laughs> so I asked my dad recently, I said, What one song sort of reminds you of Vietnam every time you hear it? I tell you the song every time I hear it, I think of Vietnam and me. I hear this song. Summer rain, man. I'm sure you're dirty, man. Dirty girl. Simon and Garfunkel, man. Please give peace a chance, man. Time is nine. You want to kick off before you're halfway through, man. Please, Simon and Garfunkel, I beg you, man. Ricky D, my brother, I love you, man. Please be with you, man. Thank you for coming to my program, man. Check out the Asbury Circle, man. Asa Salam Alaikum, man. Peace be with you, man. Have a good day, man. Take care, man.